Hello there, welcome back. In this video, I'm just going to basically go through um, pretty much what I think of Oase, Eheim, and Fluval. They seem to be the three big players, certainly in the canister filter world, and that's where my real interest lies in canister filters. So I'm going to go through a little bit of the history that I've had with the three different companies, if any. Um, what I think of their present generation of filters and the previous attempts. And this video is really just in response to that video that I put out on the Pro 5 for the Eheim because the comments there really did run the gambit of everything from yes I totally agree I won one of these they're not very good isn't it you know sad to see how far Eheim have fallen over the years um, I own alternative filters that are very very good um, all the way through to you know I mean <laughs> I wouldn't say death threats but let's just say that the YouTube filters picked up some comments that you won't see on the um, on the actual published comments um, <laughs> let's just say that the whilst I do possibly worry for the people who are making those sort of comments mental state they were hilarious <laughs> you know when you buy something if it's a good quality product from a reputable brand you would tend to buy another product from them in the future and again and again and again and if there was a real upgrade happened then you would probably upgrade whatever it is you had using mobile phones uh, cell phones for an example you know, so I can absolutely see why people would upgrade from one canister filter to another if they thought it was better. You know, really, we're all fanboys in our own way with certain products or certain companies. It's just human nature, you know. However, if something is not good, I will say it is not good. If something is good, I will say it is good. That's basically just the way I am. There's no point saying otherwise because you let yourself down and you let other people down. So that Pro 5 video was absolutely 100% from here. Not from here, you know, like a lot of these videos are where people get products given or they get paid to advertise things. It goes on all the time. I get offers all the time. Turn them all down because that's not what the channel's about. But, you know, I know people want to use the YouTube channels as a, uh, not, not so much a cash cow, but you know, a way to generate money and to become influencers. I'm definitely not an influencer. Although being an influencer, you know, in this modern day is okay. I'm maybe it's just a generation too late to think that it's something that I would do. Which leads me on to Oase. If you've noticed all the way back in my pond videos, I used Oasa gear, I used the Aquamax pumps, and I used the Filter Clear filters in a hell of a lot of the various ponds that I put in. That's because they had the best guarantees, best quality of construction, and they just did the best job for those particular ponds that I was putting in. If another product came along that was better or just as good, performed the same way, had the same guarantees, but was a little bit cheaper, I probably would have gone with that. But there wasn't, and I still don't think there is. The Oase pumps are excellent. And also the Oase canister filters are excellent as well, but they do have two different ranges. They've got the Biomaster, which, as far as I know, were developed by Oase from the ground up. They are really good. I mean, you've got that removable pre-filter, there was little niggles that I did suggest that they change. One was the uh, PPI of the foam in the pre-filter. I suggested maybe he's making that a little bit coarser. Um, I don't know whether they even saw that video or whether they listened, but they now do a set of foams, which is a bit coarser. That's great. Second thing of note out of the Oasa videos was the pipe that draws the water out in the pre-filter. Could have done with being either bigger diameter or 
and having more holes drilled in just to allow more water through which would improve the output of the pump it wouldn't be restricted as far as I know they haven't done that yet they may do in the future and I'm sure if they do people buying the filters will thank them for it now the other range of filters that Oasi do weren't actually their design they have tweaked them a little bit but they came from a company called Eden which as far as I know is an Italian company and Oasi took them over when they were trying to get into the aquarium market so they acquired Eden to get a foothold into the market they also acquired Reef One that makes the bi orbs and this next bit is going to surprise a hell of a lot of people given how often I recommend the Oasi canister filters, the, the good range anyway, the Biomasters. Way back in the day when I used to have a shop, I'd already dealt with Oasi for probably close to 20 years, had a great relationship with them. I phoned up the head of Oasi in the UK and I said, you know, I'm pretty excited that you've acquired Reef One. Can I just point out because obviously we sold the biobs and so on can I just point out something that's like critically wrong with them and that is the filtration basically what I suggested to Awaza is that they just have like a two-part plastic grid that you can just drop in open up and just click into place and then cover with gravel basically turning the biob into an under gravel system which would do away with the problems of all that sharp knobbly bits you'd be able to easily clean it fish wouldn't get sucked into the filter it would basically solve all the problems i did tell them that we had a filter media called biogravel which was intended specifically for that purpose but you know i said just develop something yourself or just you know i'm just giving you this idea uh, this went on for a long time. I was pretty excited that we were gonna, you know, really fix these problems. We decided not to, because the question which came back from the higher ups was, what's the after sales potential? Now anybody who knows biobs knows that almost everybody who owns them goes and buys new foams, sachets, month on month on month on month, and really when you've got that tank, they've got a customer for life. With that system that I proposed, it would end all of that so they didn't go for it at all i thought no problem at all i put out my video on youtube of upgrading the biob using my system basically of two foams with the bio gravel over the top very well received started selling the kits on the filter pro site also on ebay sold thousands of them not one single complaint with thousands of sales of these things and then a couple of years ago I had a message from eBay, and this is after selling these kits for seven, eight years on there, 100% positive feedback. Oasi UK has told eBay that these kits are not compatible and they will damage the tank. Therefore, we've removed all of your listings. Obviously, that came as a bit of a shock to me. I phoned up eBay and i said you know these things look at the feedback these are 100 percent compatible they do an excellent job every single person who we've sold them to has been over the moon with them oh well we can't do anything so basically they're not now sold on ebay that cost me at a conservative estimate probably 15 grand's worth of sales a year now if i'd been a dick and held a grudge whenever I got Oasi filters on you know for my YouTube channel to upgrade and show and show you guys and so on I would say these are the worst things ever look at all these faults the terrible crap you know but I don't do that because as I said before what is on the channel comes from here not from here Oasi make cracking filters so if anybody's wanting a filter for a certain size tank theirs is one of the filters that i would probably recommend first you know <laughs> and i haven't told that story to to many people maybe it's just a handful so you know that's a breaking news for you but uh it's a bit of a bummer because as i say i sold thousands of these kits and i would still love to see Oase do something with that filtration in the biobs but 
if I'm offering an alternative to whatever they've got, I'm happy with that, you know. If I can't do it on eBay, then whatever. I can't do it on eBay. <laughs> Sorry, I had to move there. I got disturbed. Um, where were we? Owazi? I think I've covered pretty much everything with Owazi. Um, Fluval? Fluval are a company that's been going for years and years and years, and the improvements that they make in the filters are always slight. They're never radical, but they always do make a difference to the performance of the filter. Take, for example, the O7 series in, in comparison to the O6. The O6 built on the O5, which built on the O4, but the differences between the O6 and the O7 was that um, they added rubbery feet to it to make it quieter. They improved the foams in the cartridge, which goes down the side. They made them bumpy, and according to them, it increased the surface area by approximately 30%, which means that it obviously would go longer but before it needed cleaning out. And they actually put the filter media and the fine pad in the correct place. So in the 07 series, you've got the bumpy foams down the side, then the water goes down the bottom, it goes up into the bottom tray, which has got a medium density pad, capped off with a fine pad, followed by the media. That is perfect. So they've improved the layout of the filter, the performance of the filter, and they've done that you know for a reasonable price they're just very very good filters i've actually had the pleasure of talking to a couple of the guys who are very high up in fluval can't remember the names although i did get introduced to them we did a skypey sort of a call a couple of years ago and we basically just you know talked about filtration they were both really interested and interesting and we just had a good conversation about all sorts of filtration um, so that you know they're a very involved very good company and again I would recommend them as well beyond that when I had the shop we used to sell the uh, canister filters from Fluval and they always went down pretty well with the people who we sold them to you know they were just a good quality canister filter for a reasonable price and then we come on to Eheim. Now Eheim, like Oase, is a German company, and Eheim have been going for, oh God, I don't know, 50 years or something in the aquarium trade, maybe it's even longer. They, at one time, were the be all and end all of aquarium equipment. And that kind of peaked, and it appears to be trailing off there filters used to be absolutely excellent in fact the first video about canister filters that I ever put out on YouTube many many years ago features one of the Pro 2 series from Eheim it's just a you know good solid no nonsense robust filter so I used to always recommend those the O3 series came out they were a little bit more advanced um, a little bit more fancy and I used to recommend those to everybody as well. When I saw the O4 series, however, I realized that something was seriously wrong. And if you check out the video on the 600, well, what was it, 4 plus, Pro 4 plus 600, I'll put the links to, you know, this video and any other videos in the video description. That, it seemed to have taken a real step back, but it was costing way more. So I wasn't very, I wasn't very complimentary about that one. Now, given that that was a few years ago, and in the meantime, Oase released the BioMaster range of filters, which I wouldn't say they took the world by storm, but they really got off to a good start, and they continue to to maintain that sort of presence, you know. Um, they did something clever as well, Oasi. They marketed them towards people with aquascapes. They obviously, I don't know, either gave or sponsored a lot of the aquascapers on YouTube, various filters, obviously in exchange for reviews. But you can tell from the reviews that those folks are doing that they are genuinely impressed by the filters. You know, it, 
when you see a review from somebody who's been paid to review they look a little bit dead behind the eyes and I don't get that impression at all from the people who are doing the Oasa reviews they are genuinely good filters now when Eheim were planning the Pro 5 series that was a golden opportunity for that company to you know talk within itself and say look our fellas up the road here Oase they're producing a filter which is really really good they've taken a huge chunk of our market share what can we do about it and unfortunately what they chose to do about it didn't it didn't really solve any of the problems that the Pro 4 had they didn't compete with price with the Owaza Biomaster they didn't compete with quality they didn't compete with the actual capacity of the filter how much media it would hold they did do well with the flow rate which is good to see but it came at a massive cost because the you know integrated all sorts of technology into it which ultimately means the cost of these things is like twice what the equivalent of Waza filter would be and that's possibly why when I look now online I can't find any reviews in English of the Pro 5 series from Eheim anywhere you know on a website on YouTube or any of that that tells me that they're just not selling and if you compare those search results to the Oase Biomaster 850 which again holds five kilos the same as a 600T uh, there's reviews all over the place and everybody loves them <laughs> ah that's the story of my life shooting videos I can never just do it all in one go oh where were we with Eheim yeah I just think it's just a massive wasted opportunity and they've basically just handed the crown of best filter manufacturer from Germany to Oase and as I say I really should have no love for Oase but the products are excellent you know so I've got no problem recommending them when a product's good I'll say it's good I recommend it when a product doesn't live up to expectations or in fact is nowhere near expectations then I'll just say don't bother it's as simple as that that's all I can do and that brings me to the last point which is with some of the comments that were on that Pro 5 video some people were saying I'd like to see you design and manufacture a filter I would love to do that and some of the comments that said the same except they prefixed it with if you're so bloody clever why don't you design a filter you know so <laughs> they were all basically asking the same question I have thought about it I've got numerous designs for various filters and also pre-filters modular filter systems both inside and out the tank uh, but and this is a big but in fact I like big butts and I cannot lie <laughs> Uh, the, the, a lot of the people asking that question have no idea how much it costs to design something get it prototyped get the tooling done get the manufacturing sites set up contracts signed and also the patents patents cost a fortune I've actually gone through the patent and system before a few years ago I was developing a like a, a really unique sort of clothes peg so getting the prototypes done for that was probably I don't know two grand two and a half grand maybe the uh, the patent was probably about the same and that granted you protection for a year until the patent was granted or rejected and just before the end of the year the patent office contacted me to say oh yeah we're not gonna get time to look at this so if you pay again we'll promise we'll look at it next year that to me is an absolute scam you pay for something you want it done by them when they say they're gonna do it so I just said forget about it and drop the project and I already spent quite a lot of money on it that's just for something like a clothes peg now imagine if you had a filter developed with six 
unique features that you didn't want anybody to copy. That's six separate patents in Europe, in the rest of the world, and also in China. And you would still get the Chinese copy in it. So that's probably the main reason why I haven't developed and produced a filter. It would, you know, conservative estimate is that it would probably cost somewhere between 100 and 150 grand to get that done. Uh, and then it would just be copied and bashed out for half the price with a quarter of the quality by the Chinese. So that is the reason why I haven't done it. And that's a reason why if I do have a filter idea, I'll just give it away for free to you guys. And I actually looked for my old sketchbook before making this video because I was gonna show you some of the designs that I had and just give them away. I can't find it. So I'm gonna search for that. And if and when I find it, I'll show you all the drawings I've got and I'll explain what I had in mind when I made those drawings and notes. And if any of you guys want to do it, be my guest. Likewise, if you are Fluval, Oase, Eheim, and you want to copy any of those ideas, take them for yourself, be my guest. None of them are patented. And I give you full license to use them. So in summary, Fluval, just as solid as I've ever been. Oase, are flying right up there, you know, in the respectability and quality stakes. And unfortunately, Eheim have taken two major steps back with the Pro 4 and the Pro 5. That's not to say that they won't claw that reputation back, but when they do, or if and when they do develop a new filter, how many of their customers will just stay away? That, that's that's the key thing. I don't want to see Eheim. I don't want to see them, you know, effectively knacker their own business by making poor decisions. Um, it should all just be about quality. You know, if you're a quality brand, you've got to stick with quality. You've got to be better. And if you're at the top, that's when you've got to give an extra 10%. At least that's what I've always been told. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you next time.